Welcome to SoCast Live, episode two for the PlayStation Home Community Theater. I'm Lukenbacher, and with us we have Mr. David Dole. Hey guys, what's going on? And the infamous Rev. It's Friday, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have been busy the last, uh, I guess, three or four weeks now. Uh, thoroughly enjoying and uh, testing the SOCOM 4 beta. I've uh, been having a blast. What about you guys? Yeah, it's been awesome. I it's mean, been really cool. Especially this new patch. Just- yeah, we just had a patch that launched uh, late last night, early this morning, um, that made some changes. And uh, from what I understand, uh, the majority of these changes were all purely based on the community feedback that the fan base has been providing uh, via YouTube, uh, the forums, uh, and Zipper responded. And, you know, I wasn't expecting to get a patch for the beta. I was expecting it like a, you know, a day one patch for the actual game on April 19th. But it was cool that they just, you know, they put out a patch for the beta. And so we put that to the test all day. Uh, And the first major change is probably the biggest, most overwhelming, you know, piece of uh, feedback the community has been giving is the new camera angle. Zipper has officially pulled it back. What are your what are your guys' thoughts on the new camera angle? I gotta say, when when I first played it, I I didn't even really notice that it was, <laughs> that it changed. I mean, I guess uh, after playing for a while, I, I did notice. I did I did feel like I could see more around me. So I feel like the uh, field of of view is is improved a lot. But um, as far as pulling it back, I think it could actually be pulled back a little more. I would agree with that too. I'm gonna agree the same way as David, and I'm sure Luke, you too. It needs to be pulled back even further because, I mean, they do show comparisons. If you look, there's a one character that has this like big orange knife, which one of the terrace. And if you look at it, the the knife is uh, definitely more viewable in the newer the newer view. But overall, I still think they should they should pull it back a little bit further. Uh, the field of view, the claustrophobia that was there before, is definitely gone. But they, st- I still think they need to pull it back just a tad bit more. Because it's still not cutting it for me. But overall, it's a much, much, much improved view compared to the old view we used to have in the beta. I agree. Uh, but what about the sprinting? Uh, yeah, that's another issue, though. Like, uh, on top of them moving the camera back, now whenever you sprint, it zooms back into that claustrophobic-feeling camera. And it's just really annoying. Like, when I think when you're sprinting, they need to have it just like it is, like how the camera is when you're not sprinting like there should be no moving in moving out it's just it's really annoying and i think they need to fix it what do you think yeah i I don't really understand why they did that i'm I'm trying to think of a you know a gameplay reason or some logical reason why they would do that and i i don't really understand why like maybe it's to make you feel like you're moving faster than you are or something i I don't i don't get why yeah transitioning from sprinting into having a ready to fire crosshair uh, becomes a little more difficult when that camera is bouncing in and out. Uh, so, I mean, and I sprint all the time. I mean, if I'm going from cover to cover or if I'm navigating a map, you know, I'm usually rushing and rushing involves sprinting, you know, to help dodge bullets or get to that uh, that strike point and that choke point a little faster. And that camera's bouncing in and out and I'm coming around a corner or coming, uh, you know, up a stairwell. Um, I mean, it, it's just disorienting. You know, you're going to expect your crosshair or a certain feel of your target to be in a certain, you know, uh, scenario on your screen. And all of a sudden that camera just yanks back once, you know, quit sprinting. I think it needs to be a smooth transition no matter what your character's doing at all times. Plus and- now I think it, it feels like it's a lot more of a disconnect between sprinting and shooting. Like before it felt like sprinting was really a part of just your character movement. Now it feels like it's really two kind of two separate gameplay elements and it doesn't. It doesn't flow together as well as I think it should. Too distracting? Is that a good way to put it? Yeah, yeah. it really is. And that also brings us to another point, which is the collision the collision issues that are happening now. It's even worse than it was before. Uh, on top of the sprinting, zooming in and zooming out, now you have to basically come upon every single object that you go by. Your, your The camera is colliding with it. Well, I guess I guess on the latest zip line, the way they were explaining it is I guess that that uh, if you're the cameraman, so to speak, on your field of view from your character, it's you know it's behind you probably eight to ten feet, and then probably about eight feet in the air. And I guess that when you pull that camera back, it's going to interact with the the objects around you a little bit more. Um, I guess that bubble of, of of vision there on 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 capturing your viewpoint has grown and gotten bigger, so it's going to interact with the other objects around. But you know, but I agree. I mean, the camera collision seems to be a little bit worse, especially even in spectator mode. Um, you know, navigating through the map. Uh, I mean, at any point in time, it seems like that collision is always an issue, and I'm just not understanding 
why that why we're having those collision issues and and I think the root of it all is just trying to have that cinematic feel from the beginning but I need something stable and fixed I, I don't like <laughs> I, I'm telling you I mean it, playing certain sessions and certain at certain times at night especially after a long play session the bouncing into that camera just starts doing a number on your eyes you know right and you brought up a good point like this the stability it just feels like you're the camera's always moving like I think I just people would be more happy with a stable camera it's just more easy and, and, and appeasing the yeah. reason for a, a lot of these issues is that the game was developed from the ground up with like to not work the same way as the classic socoms did so it was you know it was developed from the, the mag engine which was the first person shooter and I, I just feel like the entire time they never had the intention of, of having the camera any farther back so now when they pull it back they run into all these issues with collision that they right. just did not plan for it all. But, but the most important point out of all this is that the camera has been pushed back. So right. Zipper is listening and they are processing that feedback. So at least that's a step in the right direction. And maybe they can just make some minor tweaks from here on out well, to make it even better. Issues, these collision issues will eventually get fixed. They'll tweak them out. So there's, there's nothing to worry about. We're good. Yeah, at least the road's built. We just got to smooth it out a little bit. Um, uh, let's see here. The next item we have are the grenades. They have tweaked, you know, how far you can actually throw a grenade but i think at this point in time i think they tweaked it down a little too much like we've got to have a compromise here i admit that the older version was a little bit too long um but this new one i mean i feel like i'm throwing a bowling ball or something i mean like like my grenade's 20 pounds i mean i, I feel like i could throw further than that in dixie league baseball when i was eight years old you know i think you're just a no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. No, I'm just you know, you're right. You're right. They are. They're really. They're really heavy now. I think what they need to do is go back in. Right. They were too too far. You could throw them too far before. Now it feels like you can't throw them far enough. So I think they need to go back and have a medium in between both of those, and that'd be perfect. It feels almost a bit more like a kind of like how the grenades in Halo work, where you don't. It's not really a long distance throw. They're all like it's almost meant for like close quarters combat, whereas. Whereas, you know, SOCOM classically, it's they're really meant for tactical play and try to get people's attention and try to, like, you know, move around the environment. But, um, he's now, tactical. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, now it feels like I think they brought they brought them back about 15 feet because there's just one part on the map in Port Authority where I throw a grenade. And, uh, usually it would make it over to a certain point and now it's brought back a lot. And I was actually kind of used to the grenades the way they were, they were before. And, uh, right. It seems like that there's all these extremes. Either the grenades are throwing too far, and they bump them down, and they're a little, you know, too too low now. And then and then with the collision of the grenades with the environment, they were way too high, and now they're way too low. I just think that we need to find something in the middle here on some of these tweaks. I don't know if they're doing the extremes on purpose just to get a good test group, but we need to have a compromise and kind of meet in the middle on all this. I agree. Yeah, like I, I like to just totally run to a certain area of the map and, and find a, a big box or a wall to use the cover system. And then I can totally be a beast when I use the cover system. And I can pre-aim my crosshairs and everything when I use the cover system. I can totally shoot and own and pwn and get kill streaks. Cover system. You know, I don't know why people message me all the time about the cover system. It's just part of the game, you know? It's just the way I play using the cover system. You know, that's the way my clan rolls. I like to use the cover system. So you noobs who like to rush, beware of the cover system. Because I'm coming to get you, fool. You've just heard the latest single from scrub Brought to you by Camps R Us. Cover system. Well, um, they have improved the accuracy of the weapons across the board, and one of the areas that, that has dramatically improved is hip firing. Um, and I tell you what, uh, with my uh, last three to four hours I've put on the beta with this new patch, firing from the hip while I'm rushing has seen a great, great improvement alongside the, the better camera angle. I'm feeling more like a SOCOM rusher now. What about you guys? Uh, yeah, I agree. It, I, I, today, the first thing I did was pull out my assault rifle, and started running around shooting people, and it felt so much better than it did before. Because I'd usually run around with my SMG, and now I can easily kill people with my assault rifle instead of having to result or to turn in my SMG for the, those up-close gun battles. And that's what I miss about 
this so calm. Like I just be running on my SMG and now I can use my assault rifle and feel confident with it. Like those first few bullets are accurate now. Well, I can tell you my gunfights are a lot shorter now. My bullets are going where I'm aiming and vice versa. If I'm running out in the open, I can't just sprint and hop around and hope that that random bullet spray, you know, doesn't kill me. And I, you know, before the patch, I could get away with that quite easily, diving down and jumping around, you know. But now with the, without the bullet spray element on those first couple shots, I mean, those gunfights are moving quick. I'm dropping people, you know, within just a second. Same way, I'm dying just within a second. Yeah, so I, was, I feel like I'm being rewarded for better skill now. Yeah, I still want the movement speed, especially strafing. To be. Yeah, that strafing speed really does need to be bumped up just a little bit more. <laughs> when I first started playing, actually, um, I was I still had the, the SMG as my primary weapon, and I I was not getting kills the same way I used to. So right away, I switched back to the assault rifle, and I was actually able to run around and and get a bunch of kills using the assault rifle. Well, that brings up another point that they've uh, they definitely tweaked down the SMGs. I mean, at one point in time, the SMG with some kind of optics seemed to be the most dominating weapon on the map, but that's not the case anymore. Right, that's back to my other point, but yeah, it's definitely a decrease, and I like that overall. Yeah, it's a lot better. It's it's more realistic. It's more meant for close close up uh, battles now, and whereas the assault rifle is, I think it's now back to the primary spot. It's classic feel. Well, I've, and they also have made some changes here to the uh, the scope recoils, the horizontal and vertical recoil. Um, they've added a lot of tweaks to those optics because, you know, lately it just seems like no matter where, where anybody's at on a map, you could just go to the red dot or the times four optical and just hold the trigger down with really no reper- you know repercussions. And, and that's really been toned down. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like the improvements? I mean, I do because I did not, I did not like the L1 gun battles. And since it was so easy and so accurate, that's, that just seems to be what the majority was using. But now I feel a lot more of the OTS being used. I feel a lot more of just firing from the hip being used. And I feel oh. like all those different feature options are starting to get explored by all the fan base instead of just one of them getting more attention than the other. Hit firing the SMGs and the recoil have changed how it feels when I play now, which is good. And especially that when you're scoping in, uh, you can't go full auto anymore without it having a, a lot of recoil, it, even up and down and side to side. It's all over the place, which is good. It's it makes it more secure, uh, skillful. But all, I really think I know Zipper is probably not going to do this, but I really wish when you went full auto, it would kick you out of the scope. But but for what they've done now, the recoil being increased. I'm loving it so much more now. I think having that recoil there just helps it a lot more. And and actually, like, to be honest, I don't even really use the the red dot scope or or the the L1 now at all. Um, well, like the red dot if there's like a really far you know far yeah, guy, but yeah, the L1 I don't really use. I did the same thing. I've just been using the hip firing, which is good. One of the biggest reliefs I have about this patch is not per se from a uh, a technical aspect, but just more of a a feel, so to speak, as a SOCOM fan. Um, You know, this patch, I feel like I didn't have to learn how to aim all over again. Like, I didn't feel like I'm having to learn how to play the game all over again because of some major changes and tweaks that the patch brought on. And I've seen that happen in a lot of games. You know, I've seen a lot of patches come in that totally make you almost have to learn to play the game a different way. And I feel like this patch didn't do that. This patch improved the gameplay. And it's letting me play SOCOM for the way that I think it should be played. And I don't think I'm alone on that. I see a lot of the fans stepping forward. And they're, I think one of the biggest things was just realizing how important the fans are to Zipper. Just see them you know, process all this feedback. Because, man, there were a lot of posts in those beta forums, and there has been information flying everywhere. And I'm amazed at Zipper's ability to keep track of all that and actually process that and already get a patch out within, what, three, three and a half weeks now on some of the stuff? Yeah, sites. I was impressed. That's yeah. the big thing. Like They're, they're actually going in and giving our, getting our feedback and already applying it into a beta patch for us. And these are like key changes that we wanted, and they're already putting them in so we can test them out and get feedback for the final release of the game. Yeah. One more thing I wanted to mention. Um, uh, they have MVPs now at the end of a game, which yeah, that was not there before, was it? No, nope, that's awesome. I like it. Yeah, I got so I'm, I'm, I, I had no idea that was coming back. I was glad to see that. I got an MVP my first game I played, and I was like, damn, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, before we go here, guys, uh, we just wanted to officially announce that the RealSocom.com has officially launched their own YouTube channel, uh, and it's uh, it's live now. So go take a look at YouTube.com/slash The Real Socom. Uh, you can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter, and as always, the RealSocom.com website, where you'll find articles, podcasts, and a very active forums all about the world of SOCOM. So thank you for uh, for watching, and this has been Luke Embacher, Rev, and David. We'll catch you next time.